The president says it's mission accomplished in Syria. Do you agree? Is it mission accomplished in Syria? And what is the mission? Well, that was the, the second question sort of answered the first question. I think it's very difficult to say mission accomplished if the mission is to deter the use of chemical weapons. We hope that will be the case, but we did a strike a year ago for that same purpose. Uh, and it was deemed a success, but the chemical weapons have continued to be used. So I think it's impossible to say at this point that uh, the mission has been accomplished. They, they had, uh, it was a more significant strike than a year ago. Uh, they hit three sites instead of one, more, uh, more missiles. It was accomplished apparently with, uh, uh, with the precision that our military is capable of, but uh, saying that it's been a success, we won't know until we see whether the regime continues to use chemical weapons. These strikes were launched because American authorities and others say they have information proving that Assad launched a chemical weapon attack against his own people. You're on the Intelligence Committee. Did the Trump administration present any evidence to you to support this claim? They did uh, notify the leadership of the Congress on Friday before the strike, but I'm unaware that they presented definitive evidence of what the, uh, what the use of the chemical weapons was. Uh, we got uh, updated briefings over the weekend from the Defense Department about the strike, uh, and they, they indicated they had confidence that they are, uh, the chemical weapons had been used, but they didn't supply the evidence. Now, there are going to be uh, some uh, classified briefings this week. I'm sure we'll have uh, more information, but certainly they believe that they had uh, the evidence that these chemical weapons had been used. And I think it's important, Jake, to distinguish between a chemical weapons attack and a general incursion into Syria. Uh, the former, chemical weapons have been essentially illegal worldwide for over 100 years since World War I. They've been used occasionally, but that really is a red line for most of the world. So going in to take out chemical weapons capacity, which is what this strike was all about, is, is arguably uh, uh, it, within our national interest and, and justified. What this strike was not, and I think we're fortunate that that's the case, was a strike against the Assad regime itself, an attempt to sort of intervene in the, in the civil war. So it was a narrow strike, uh, but as you say, to go back to your initial question, whether the mission was accomplished, we won't know for months. Now you have said, in terms of the back and forth about whether or not Congress should be, uh, should vote before the United States launches military action. You've said you're okay with these limited strikes, uh, as you just uh, delineated, though in general you say you're not comfortable with Congress not playing its role when it comes to the, the use of force. Presidents for decades ha have used military force without congressional approval. Um, you might remember in 2013 the Senate had to pull back a vote on Syrian strikes after President Obama asked for it, uh, approval. And isn't it really the unspoken uh, fact here the Congress doesn't really want to vote yes or no on war, that they want to cede this authority to the president so they don't have to go on the record? It, it's not unspoken by me, Jake. I think that's absolutely correct. Uh, it isn't a case of presidents over the years uh, taking this power unto themselves. Congress has abdicated the power. Congress hasn't declared war since 1942. Uh, there have been a, several of these authorizations, uh, but I think you're absolutely right. And, and I understood late last week that the Foreign Relations Committee was finally going to take up an authorization uh, in the case of Syria. We'll see whether that actually happens. But I think you're right that generally Congress is what they're really good at, what we, I guess I have to say now we're really good at, mm is uh, standing on the sidelines, avoiding making the decisions, and then criticizing the decisions the president makes. Uh, well, kudos to you to for the acknowledgement of that. President Trump said this on Friday night. Take a listen. In 2013, President Putin and his government promised the world that they would guarantee the elimination of Syria's chemical weapons. Assad's recent attack and today's response are the direct result of Russia's failure to keep that promise. The president's exactly right on that. How, how do you account for the fact that the Obama administration seemingly trusted Russia to supervise the Syrians getting rid of their chemical weapons? Were they naive? 
Well, I, I think perhaps somewhat naive, but also going back to that period, and I remember living through it, the Russians did, in fact, there was a great deal of physical on the ground activity of getting rid of chemical weapons. I mean, it was, they were shipping them uh, to a destruction site. I mean, it was being monitored. So it wasn't like it was pure promises. There, there was, in fact, activity involved in destroying and, and uh, cutting back on the capacity. Now, whether uh, Assad rebuilt that capacity on his own, it's hard to believe he would do anything without uh, the Russians knowing about it. So I think, in essence, the president was right that that the uh, the Russians uh, essentially guaranteed that this wasn't going to happen again. And and uh, the evidence is at this point we don't see, I haven't seen it definitively, but the the evidence the weight of the evidence now seems to be that they are using uh, chemical weapons. By the way, Jake, they're killing their people daily. This morning they're bombing again without chemical weapons and still killing people uh, of their own citizens. So, uh, yes, getting involved uh, in terms of chemical weapons is an important national interest, uh, but let's not kid ourselves that somehow if we stop chemical weapons from being used, uh, the, uh, the horror of what's going on over there is going to somehow stop as well. Very briefly, I just want to ask you a quick question. The New York Times is reporting that allies of, <coughs> of President Trump believe that the criminal investigation into the president's lawyer, Michael Cohen, out of the U.S. Attorney's Office in the Southern District of New York, that that is more threatening to the president than special counsel Robert Mueller's investigation into possible Russian collusion. You know a lot more about the evidence or lack thereof any, of any possible Russian collusion than I do. What do you think? Does the Cohen probe uh, bear more of a threat? Well, I, I think it's really important to realize that what's going on in the, in the District of New York is not under uh, the counsel Mueller. This is a separate investigation by a United States attorney's office uh, in, in the Southern District of New York. So it's a separate deal. Whatever happens to, to Mueller, and I hope nothing happens, uh, it won't affect that prosecution. I think it's a serious matter. There's no question because Mr. Cohen's name keeps coming up with, in connection with all of these things, whether it's the, the uh, Stormy Daniels or the Russians. Uh, he seems to have uh, uh, some involvement in all of those things. All right, Senator Angus King, independent of Maine, it's good to see you, sir. Thanks for joining us.